am Chelsea. I'm with the uh, Bugwoo, which is the BU Grad Workers Union. And how long have you worked in this profession? Uh, I've been at BU for five years now. What issues cause you guys to want to unionize? I mean, a lot of issues, mostly around uh, our wages, um, our health care, and um, worker protections. Um, so we don't get paid enough to live in the city that we work in. Um, and we have the same health care as the undergrads, meaning that if we want to uh, go see our doctor, we have to go to health services along with the undergrads. A lot of us are in our late 20s, early 30s, and we still have to go see the health care providers that see the undergrads instead of a real doctor. The worker protections, um, we still don't have protections from sexual harassment outside of Title IX. Um, we don't have protections from overworking, so we're only supposed to work 20 hours a week. Most of us work anywhere from 40 to 80 hours a week. We don't have dental, we don't have vision. Basically, there's a disparity between the different departments. So every department gets paid differently. The humanities make about 24,000 a year. Um, some of them make only 6,000 a semester. Um, and in the sciences, it's anywhere from like 35 to 40. Um, but that's still not quite enough to live in Boston. The MIT and Harvard unions won $50,000 for their baseline. Like that is what they believe you need to have in order to pay rent, eat food in Boston. Um, and even Northeastern, who still doesn't have a contract, gets paid better than we do. So you mentioned that um, Harvard and MIT got 50000 They're right across the water from you guys. Yes. Same neighborhood, cost of living, everything's still the same. Yep. So they're right over in Cambridge, and Cambridge is pretty, um, you know, same as the Fenway, Kenmore, and... Um, um, Alston Brighton area. So you can get some pretty cheap apartments in Alston Brighton. It's like a half hour from campus, um, but it's it's rat infested. I have lived in some pretty grody apartments in order to afford rent, and that's still paying over $1,000. I have seven roommates. Now, the worker protection, let's, let's get on that, because that's been something that across the nation, whether you're janitorial or, or security, that issue's been coming up a lot. So what are some of the issues you and your coworkers, what, what are you guys hearing and wanting the change? Like so worker protection? working hours, we want to have some sort of protection that our PIs, which are our um, advisors, can't overwork us. Um, so we want to be able to legally have some sort of, um, you know, precedent in place that says we will work our 40 hours or our 20 hours for what we're getting paid. And if we work over that, it's our choice, but we shouldn't be forced to work over our 20 hours because we have theses to write. Um, and that our thesis research is not included in those 20 hours. So me personally, when I'm teaching, I spend about 20 hours a week teaching and about 20 hours a week on my research. So it's about 40 hours a week of work. And I work weekends, I work nights, whatever my research requires. Um, some people have to travel for their research. Um, some people pay straight out of pocket for that and they don't get paid enough for that. Or they have to apply for their own travel grants. The U doesn't uh, give us money to travel to conferences. They don't give us money to um, basically do anything that would further our ability to get a job in the future. Um, they say that they do, but it's really just little workshops that are not very helpful. So we have in our articles one that's specifically about providing money towards professional development. Um, the other one is childcare. A lot of graduate students have children. Right now, they give us $600 a year as our child kid stipend, and it's not per child, and it's a lottery. Um, they, do, they don't get a discount at the childcare facility that's on campus. Um, and they, their current um, counter proposal is that they'll give us $1,000 instead of 600. If you have three kids, that's not even going to pay for a week's worth of um, uh, child care. So you guys are on strike. Now, what led up to this uh, strike? How, how did the vote go? Was it a 100 percent strike authorization vote? Almost. We had about a 98 um, percent strike authorization vote, which was, I think, the highest the SEIU has seen. That's incredible. That shows solidarity for sure. Yeah, and I think for our vote to make the union was the highest in union history as far as yes votes go. So how long have you guys been on strike and what led, what issues led up to that? So we've been on strike for about five to six weeks now. We started on May 25th um, and it is a teaching and grading strike. 
Um, so people who are doing research are still doing research. They're not on strike. Um, and what led up to this is that we've been bargaining with the university since June of last year. And we had maybe 10 bargaining sessions all throughout the fall semester and into the beginning of the spring semester. And we weren't making much progress. They weren't responding to us. They weren't giving us counter proposals, even though everything that we proposed was on the table come December of last year. And they just weren't coming to the table. They weren't um, making any progress. They weren't sending anything back. So we threatened to strike. Um, and when we threatened to strike, they started coming to the table. They started uh, scheduling more bargaining sessions. They started giving us counter proposals. They were garbage counter proposals, but they at least were giving us counter proposals. And when we went on strike, we started making even more progress. So now we have a bargaining session every week um, and we've had a handful of our articles T8 already. Some of the really important ones like academic freedom, protection from sexual harassment, um, and a few other small changes to our um, the language of our healthcare. Um, but we're still, you know, waiting for responses on our major articles. Like they haven't responded at all about healthcare as far as like adding dental or vision. And the counter proposal they made for wages was to go to 42,000 uh, a year, um, which some of the departments, that would be a downgrade because they get 43. Um, and for the humanities department, they would not be getting that because they have currently eight month contracts instead of 12. So they would be getting a nine month contract and they'd be getting 30,000 a year, which is not enough. And even the university board itself has said that everyone should be on 12 month contracts. BU is the only one that has grad students or anyone on an eight month contract. Nine months is what the faculty are on. Eight months is not enough time. They don't get paid over Christmas at all. Um, and they still do work over the summer. They still teach, they have to, uh, or they have to find employment elsewhere. But if you find employment elsewhere, you risk getting kicked out of the university. In our contracts that we sign when we join the university, it says that we will not find work outside of the university. Um, and so, even if you are making, you know, $6,000 a semester and that's all you're making, you're technically not allowed to work outside the university. Wait a second. Is that, wait, almost like a non-compete or something? I mean, it's, it's like... just like a, you should be focusing on your academics. You're here for school. You're not here for working. So if you're working outside of the school, then you're not working towards your degree progression. If you're not working towards your degree progression, you can get kicked out of the program. You can get kicked out for a lot of other things, saying bad things about the administration, um, which is why we need the worker protections. So how have they reacted to your strike? Has there been any kind of hostility or anything like that? Yes. So they changed the way we get paid. So now and we have to fill out an assertion form every week if you want to get paid. Um, so those on strike, I've been going without pay for five weeks now. Um, and because I am on strike from teaching um, and people who are in the research positions who are not striking have to fill out this form. If they forget to fill out the form or if they fill it out incorrectly, um, they don't get paid either, even though they're not on strike, which is highly illegal and wage theft. Um, and we've already filed a ULP, which is an unfair labor practice with the NL NLRB, um, but those take a really long time to get resolved. So um, we'll hopefully see something, you know, in the next few months, but it's doubtful we'll see anything before the end of the strike. Yeah, no question about that. And one thing that we're working on in Washington State and in other states is actually, you know, having unemployment benefits for uh, people on strike because that is a tactic that a lot of these, you know, companies, corporations do because they're like, okay, there's only so long you can hold out before you run through all your savings and max out your credit cards. And, and most of us back. were getting paid so little. My credit card is already basically maxed from just what I was getting paid before. I, I couldn't afford to live in the city the past five years that I've been living here. So I don't have a savings account. My checking account has just enough to pay rent in it and that is it. I don't have enough to buy groceries. All that goes on my credit card. And it's, I've been doing that for years. I've got maybe fourteen, fifteen thousand dollars worth of debt on my credit card. And that started when I started grad school. It was zero when I started grad school. How is the community and your fellow uh, students here reacting to you guys? Are they showing support and solidarity yes, for you guys? Yes, they're very supportive. They, um, we have a, a strike fund that is funded by the community. Um, so we can, you know, apply for funds and 
Um, I myself have applied for funds in order to pay rent. Um, and it's like on a need base, but we were able to fundraise almost like 90,000 at the beginning of the strike. Um, it has since decreased because we've done payouts to members of the community in the um, that are striking. Um, but we're still, you know, working on trying to get more funds so that we can have the strike last longer. Um, some RA, um, some people in the research positions have, you know, also gone without pay um, in solidarity. Some professors and staff members have done mini strikes in solidarity and they come out to our picket line um, just to, you know, show that they really care. Um, everyone's really mad at admin right now because they really don't pay anyone on campus enough money. Um, even though they're a nonprofit, they make almost $1.5 billion in profit every year of surplus. Um, so it's not that they don't have the money to pay us. They're just not willing to pay us. They're also raising the tuition to 90000 next year. Of course they are. It, it's like sixty six now. It, it like not including room and board. Um, but including room and board, it's going to be 90000 next year. And you have to do room and board. There is no exception. What? Yep. Even if you live off campus, you still have to have a meal plan. There is no exceptions. There better be gourmet chefs. Oh, no. They get like three meals and that's in rotation. It's garbage food. That apartment better they be make, nice. They make so much money off of their rentals. The grad student housing is more than like it's 1500 a month to live in a dorm, which is more than paying for a shitty apartment where you get to have pets. Like you can't have pets in the dorms. Like the graduate housing is like literally dorm style. You have dorm style furniture. Um, the... They own almost all the property around here. So they have off campus housing in a lot of these apartments that are around here and they charge so much money for it. Like basically BU is a landlord at this point and they charge ridiculous amounts of money to live here on campus or anywhere near campus because they're just buying up the properties and charging us to live close to campus. They don't pay grad students enough to afford to live in the housing that they provide. How can people like me, people watching this, people in the community help you guys in your fight for a contract uh donate donating money to our strike fund will help us to you know maintain the strike um you know sending letters to the provost saying hey what you're doing is not cool um we get letters like weekly emails from the man and where can people find this information to donate to the strike fund so and, if you uh, go to bugwoo.org there is helpful links for faqs on like what we're fighting for, what we have currently done in bargaining. There is a link to the Give Butter, um, uh, which is who's hosting our fund. Um, there is also links to the SA SEIU parent page as well. Um, and there are, um, you know, lists of things for like, if you're a graduate student, if you're an undergrad, if you're faculty, if you're in the community, all the different ways that you can show support. Um, there's letters you can sign um, that we send to the provost, basically to show them that we're still strong. We've been at this for five weeks, but we are not backing down. Can you spell out that website? It's B U, yeah, B U G W U dot org. Perfect. Hey, thank you so much for taking this time with me. Hey, good luck in your fight, and we're we're behind you. Thanks. <laughs>